Have you ever wondered how composers actually compose music? Well, history is full of composers, and there's still a lot of them around today. Each one of them has a unique way of composing, a reflection of his or her own background, inspirations, and techniques. But they all share a love for music and have the skills to write new music using a common language that performers and listeners will understand. So today, we're going to talk to one composer to get a better understanding of how composing music works for him. That composer is Jake Runnestead, one of the youngest full-time composers in the United States. <sighs> Hi. And we have a whole bunch of excellent questions for him. So take it away, Jake. Okay. First question. What do composers do? Well, that's a really good question. Let's put it this way. Let's say you want to build something. Like a birdhouse. What do you need? An instruction manual. It's the same for music. A composer creates an instruction manual to tell the musicians how to play a piece of music. Composers create scores, sheets of paper, or an electronic screen that includes everything the performers need to know. What instruments to play when, the rhythms, notes, tempo, meter, dynamics, and much more. Once the performers follow all of these instructions, voila, the composer's music comes alive. Next question. What do you have to learn and know about music to be a composer? Well, as a composer, you have to know a lot of different things. We must know how to read music, how to notate music, how each voice type and instrument works, how certain instruments sound together, we need to study the music of other composers to see how they put their instruments together to create powerful music. And we need to learn how vocal and instrumental lines interact using a technique called counterpoint. There's a lot more we need to know, but that's a good list so far. How long does it take you to write a piece of music? Well, it really depends. Sometimes, with shorter pieces, it can take up to a week and other longer pieces can take over a year. Can you hear the music in your head as you write it down before it's even sung or played? Actually, yes I do. I hear the music in my head through a process called audiation. Have you ever been doing something like eating a bowl of cereal and then you have a song pop into your head and you can hear it as if it were playing on the radio? That's audiation. In my case, that music is original music that's never been heard. Next question. What do you use to compose? I compose everything on paper using pencil. Then I can fine tune harmony at the piano. Sometimes I will record an idea into my phone to save it for later so I don't forget it. Where do you like to compose music? Well, that can vary, really. I like to compose outside, like at Minnehaha Falls, or indoors, like at my friend's condo. In other words, in places where I feel comfortable and inspired. Next question. Where do you find your inspiration? I find my inspiration in a number of things. In literature, visual art, and nature. And those are just a few. Next question. How do you come up with musical ideas? Well, improvisation is an important part of my process. First, I'll think about the mood or feeling of the music I want to create. Then, I'll sing or play some ideas of what that might sound like. Or, I'll just close my eyes and imagine a scene and what sounds might accompany that scene. Well, that's it for questions. Now, remember that I'm just one composer out of many. So how I write music is going to be a little different than how other composers work. So I hope that was helpful in you learning a little bit more about composers and how to compose music. So now it's your turn. Get on out there and compose some music. Mm. <laughs>